Hello again, and we are back with uh, more of the KK2 Complete Guide. We have gotten a ton of requests for more information about this SK450 Dead Cat Quad. So I'm gonna do a quick bit on uh, how to fine tune one of these guys. I've done a bunch of research, I kinda got it dialed. It's also in response to um, our buddy's challenge about making this thing go straight up. I'm gonna make sure we do that. Um, got all the tuning figured out, so we're gonna go into that in just a second. First, we're gonna go ahead and fly the thing and show you uh, some of those adverse characteristics that we're trying to get rid of. And uh, we'll take it from there. Um, do the turn, you can see that. And a bit of wobble and then do a, uh, you know, bring it in. Don't try to compensate, just punch it and let it let it do its thing. There you go. Um, okay. Can you get that good hose there should I do another? Yeah. Another? No, I got it. Safe. Um, so as you can see from Stuart's quick flight demonstration there, there are a couple of things that this does that normal X quads don't, or still might, but uh, not to the extent this does. When you give this thing full throttle from a standstill, it does want to pitch toward the front there. And also, as you're descending, it's got a bit of a wobble. Now, both of those things are caused because a normal quad has all four arms oriented like the back of these. Every arm, 90 degrees from center, offset 45. These are not the same. They are both longer and at a funny angle. So I'm gonna show you guys there's a bit of physics and math involved, but I'm gonna make it as simple as I can. And I'm also gonna give you the new numbers for this thing so that you will be able to, even if you don't care to do any of the math and science, you will still be able to plug these numbers in and make it fly really well. So we're going to get to that in just a second. Come on. First things first, when you're going to tune uh, the SK450 or any quad or other uh, copter, you need to make sure that your uh, trims are centered on the KK board and that the copter is physically balanced front to back so the battery location is correct so the thing doesn't have any inherent wobbles. Now the board, as uh, Stuart learned today, will compensate quite a bit for a lack of balance. So you, you can move that battery around and the thing's gonna figure it out, but it isn't gonna fly very well. So first things first, balance the quad. With the SK450, that's a little bit different. With a normal quad, you could just pick it up by the two corners and it should come up kind of level. Um, the SK does not. Uh, so the only real way to balance it is to carefully uh, basically find the center of the board and lift it that way and you sort of move the batter around until you can achieve that. Now Stuart and I figured out earlier that right about there with this particular quad gets you balanced around the center so you can get it picked up and there that's pretty level. Um, so that works for an SK450 without a battery on it uh, or sorry without a camera on it. When you put a camera on it obviously you have to move stuff around. So step one balance the copter. Just did that. Step two is centering the trims from the radio to the board. So the first thing that we have to do after we've balanced the copter is come in here and make sure that all of the trims are centered so that the board is not receiving any erroneous information from your radio. You can't assume that just because you've let go of the sticks and they're centered that the receiver is actually seeing a fully centered signal. So we're gonna go in here to the menu. We're gonna go down to receiver test. It's the second option in the menu. And take a look at what's going on. Now when we get in there, you can see here We've got a couple of, uh, an aileron number of two, an elevated number of three, and then our auxiliary switch is on. Now we can check and make sure that our aux switch is working, that it should just go from minus 100 to 100 or somewhere around there, which it does, which we can see. And then the other thing we need to do is make sure that our aileron and elevator trims are centered. So you just use the trim, not the trim tabs on your radio, and you hit a few switches over and over until you get zero numbers on all of those pictures. So now we know that this is fully centered, fully zeroed, and fully balanced. So from there we can begin the tuning process, which is going to involve this giant messy board behind me. So on the SK450 Dead Cat, as I started to say outside, the big difference between this and a standard quad is just the position of these front two arms. Standard quads, uh, and the way that the KK does all of its math to fly, is based on a plus-shaped quadcopter, that's this set of green lines here. That's the defaults by which the KK knows where everything is. Now, to put this as simply as I can think of it, the way that this board works is it knows where all of the motors are. And everything that it does to fly and get level and all of those, all of that math that it uses to figure out where it is in the universe is based on the position of those four motors. Since we've moved these two motors out of the way uh, to a different location, you can't run the straight up balanced normal code that is default for the KK. So we have to go in and we have to make some changes based on where those motors are. 
Now, to minimize the importance or the, or the, the math here as much as I can to kind of make this as simple as possible, what really has to happen here, the standard quad is 90 degrees, the X quad is 45 degrees from the place where it starts to do the math. So we take the sine of 45 degrees down here, and that gives us this 71 number that is the default number in all of your KK boards. So when you load the KK initially, the quad, you're always going to see these, this basically you know, each of these sets of blue numbers uh, for each motor are the standards. What we have to do for the SK450, to, uh, for the dead cat in particular, to make this thing fly well, is tell the KK board where we've now put these part two motors. Um, Again, to simplify things as much as possible, the easiest way to do that is to put this thing down on a board, do a bunch of measurements, get out a protractor, et cetera, et cetera, and figure out exactly where uh, these motors are. Now, I jumped on the forums online, did a bunch of searching on Google, and generally collated as much useful information as I could find from some really cool contributors to, uh, to put this together. And I put this chart together to simplify what they had done to try and show you guys where these motors are. Uh, on the SK450 dead cat, the front motors are 20 degrees from the normal horizontal plane and 70 degrees from the normal vertical plane, which simply means that we have to put new numbers in on the mixer editor to save those positions. So in this case, you take for your ailerons, uh, the sine of 20, so, the, so for the roll, sine of 20, which gives us 34, and for the elevator, sine of 70, which gives us 94. If you've got a smartphone, you have a way to find your sine function. It is just a button on your smartphone calculator. So in this case, once you've measured this and found, you know, say you've got 20 degrees there and 70 degrees there, you want to find the sine for that to plug into the KK. You literally just hit your sine button and then 20 is your numbers and it equals. And as you see, 0.342, which I rounded to 34. That's all there is to it. It's math, but it doesn't have to be complicated. So in theory, all we have to do to make this thing fly better is go in and punch in those numbers. Now there's one more step, because when this thing is yawing, and going around in a circle, um, these motors now have different leverage than these motors do. So it's going to affect the way it turns and the way it flies straight up. That's why you get that pitch effect when you fly. So the other two things we need to tune are the yaw numbers, which basically I arrived at by trial and error and the throttle numbers, um, which I also arrived at more or less by trial and error, with basically flying straight up and seeing what we can do with that. So, um, we're gonna adjust those things and then we're gonna plug in some new PID numbers that we also arrived at more or less by trial and error, and uh, then this thing should fly a whole lot better. Firstly, let me also apologize. This is a bit advanced for where I intended to go with episode two of the KK, um, and I will come back to the basics, so if I'm leaving some of you guys behind, fear not, we will come back and cover the things we need to cover, but for now, the event stuff. So we're going to come in here and the first thing we're going to do is go into the PI editor. That is the top, oops, move that. that is the top set of menu options. So we're going to go in there. Now, uh, roll and pitch are typically linked in the uh, KK2. So the roll setting and the pitch setting, you make one change and it changes for both. That will remain so uh, here for the, uh, for the dead cat SK450. So we're not going to unlink those two things at this point. Uh, so, first thing we're going to do is you go down to P gain. So, we have looked at our loop here, and for pitch and roll, which we are on right now, we're going to plug in 50, 100, 25, and 50, respectively. P gain goes to 50. So, you hit change, and you go to 50, and P limit is still 100. I gain is going to change to 25. And I limit stays at 20. So that'll be our basic settings for roll and pitch, which are linked. Now, if we go up to the top here, we can switch over as you see, elevator and aileron were linked, so those changes were made to both. Now, yaw, this is the most important uh, set of PIDs changes that we need to make for the SK450 dead cat. As I say, because these front two motors are in a different location, they have more yaw authority. Their, their arms are longer, and the angle is different. So these two motors have more influence over yaw direction than the back two. So we're gonna go in here, and we're gonna plug in some new settings. Our P gain, we're going to change to 55. Our P limit, uh, we are going to change to 20, it still is already. 
Now our eye gain, we're gonna bump this guy all the way up to 60. Now in my own tuning of this copter with Stuart before, we'd gotten all the way to 48, which is kind of a high value to begin with when you make slow changes. But we're gonna go all the way to 60 on our eye gain. 60, and our eye limit stays at 10. So now we've made the necessary changes here for tuning. I will at some point uh, go into a lot more detail about what the PID loop is and what it is that you're actually changing when you change this stuff. But again, for now, this is just kind of a, uh, intended to be a quick one. Um, so that is it for PID loop changes. So we're gonna plug in some new self-level numbers as well. That will make sure that when this thing is in auto-level mode, which I know Stuart spends a lot of time flying in, mm -hmm. uh, this copter will fly uh, very, very well. So we go into the self-level settings menu. Uh, it's in the uh, main menu from the KK. Hit enter and you will see it has its own P gain, its own P limit, uh, an accelerometer uh, trim for the rolling and an accelerometer trim for pitch. Uh, so in this case, we're going to go in here and our P gain, we're going to change to 42. Um, I should also say that these settings were developed for 1.6 and this is 1.5. So it should fly just fine, but the auto level uh, is significantly better in version 1.6. And so this might be a little sloppy, but it should be fine. Uh, the level. Whee! Lots of buttons. As you can see, very, very easy to program and make changes within the KK itself. So P gain and P limit are now set. And the only other one we need to change is that the uh, accelerometer trim for pitch gets a minus three. That will keep you from having to hold back an auto level as you pin the throttle and the thing goes up. Uh, in other words, we will decrease the power from these rear motors, which tend to pitch the thing forward when we climb. And that is going to go to minus three. So that's it for self-level changes. So now we've set the PID loop and we've set the self-level settings. Now the one thing we have to do to really make this thing dialed is to go in and put those sine and cosine values into the mixer editor. So we will do that next. We're going to go to mixer editor. And as you can see, it's channel, uh, it's done by channel. In this case, uh, the channel being the motors. So we have channel one, channel two, channel three, and channel four. That is, uh, the way it's laid out. So going from my board right here, which is laid out the same way, uh, we will go ahead and put these numbers in. So, so for motor number one, we are going to go to 95 on throttle. Uh, the reason for doing that is to give you a little bit of headroom. Again, this is to further correct that tendency to pitch when you lift uh, on the throttle. Um, let's see here. The aileron number here is going to go to minus 34. So as you can see, significant change from the minus 71 to go to minus 34. That is the sign of the 20 degrees for the aileron. What did I say? 34, too 34, okay. Uh, and then our elevator, which is the sign of 70, is going to be 94. Ninety-four. Okay, and then our rudder, so our yaw setting is going to go to seventy-eight. If you hold the button down, as you can see, it goes skips in larger number chunks. Um, that's it. Offset stays the same. Type is ESE. Rate stays high. So that is our changes for channel one. We're going to go through and plug the numbers in for the rest of these motors exactly as we did there and then we're gonna go out and test fly this thing. Basically, you're gonna go in and you're gonna repeat those settings based on what I have here on the board behind me for each and every one of those motors. Now, I won't bore you by going through each one of those right now and punching all of those numbers in, but we will provide a close-up of this board with the numbers so you guys can get them all and plug them into your own copters. The one thing I'll show you is to go from motor to motor in the mixer editor, go back up to the top where it says channel, and hit change, that'll take you to the next one. I'm gonna go ahead and punch the rest of these numbers in, and then we're gonna go test fly this thing and see how much better it is. Yeah. So that's it. Here is the SK450 Dead Cat as we have plugged in the new settings. Uh, we're going to take off here and we're going to repeat those same problem maneuvers for you so you can see how much better this thing flies now. We're going to punch it straight up. You can see how that goes. You see how much less wobble there is as it comes out of a turn and on descent. I think the thing's flying great. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Stuart here and we're going to 
show you some more flying. <laughs> so, uh... so we're gonna take off. We're going to do punch up. We're going to fly around. We do some turns. Yeah, punch up is important. That's... Punch up is very important. That used to really piss me. <laughs> Sorry, annoy me. That used to be very irritating. <laughs> okay, here we go. Nice. Okay, so it does seem much more stable already. Uh, I'm gonna punch it now. Oh, that's better. Oh. Much better. That's much, much better. Much improved. They're, much um, less wobble coming down. It, still a little bit of That yet. back right is still... I think we probably need to check your ESC calibration, but we'll do that in yeah, a minute, okay. and I'll explain how that works too. I'll try one more time. Not today. <laughs> yeah, much yeah, better. so much better. And the wobble is much better, much better. all the way down. Good. Thank you, Matt. Let's, uh, let's see a couple of those turns. Right. Let's see. Maybe. Fast, remember, abrupt maneuver. So fast forward into a turn. Let's see what it does. If I crash, I'm not going to be very happy. If I crash, I'm not going to be very happy either. Oh, okay. Pin it. Okay. Oh, let's see. Yeah, that is that That's is way better than it was. This is why I, I, what'll really be cool is to see how much difference this makes on the GoPro camera that's mounted on it. Because now you, all yeah, that little true. finite vibration yeah. should be gone. Well, we can see the results of that. We will know that very shortly, but... Uh, at neat, remember? At neat fair. Name dropping neat, though. Name dropping neat. Okay, Come to neat. So much cooler. That is my, uh, that's my vastly improved. Okay. Vastly. Good-o. good -o. Thank you, sir. Uh, you are this welcome. This is why I build quads and Matt And I tune them. quads. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, which is crap because I build them really well too, but we won't get into that. <laughs> speaking of which, uh, yes. should we mention the... We have an integrated PCB board that has been released as a replacement for the Dead Cat. Stuart here is going to be building another Dead Cat quad to show how much weight we can reduce and how much better that thing can fly when you take a few pounds off. By the way, i got to try this real quick. Go up a little. Okay. Ultimate stability check for people that you trust. Okay. That's really good. <laughs> Abusing my cat like that. Put to the SPA. SPCA. SPCA? RSPCA? That's any wrong. Awesome. Very, very cool. Much, much improved. Uh, that's that for this thing. So, guys, stay tuned with us. We will be back after Neat with episode three mm -hmm. of the KK2 series, in which I promise I will go back to basics and bring you some of the early beginning stuff. Okay, that's all right. It. Thank you. Thanks. And Jose is the guy who explodes.